Hi, welcome back to Pragmatic Agility, the channel where we solve various programming slash administration problems. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at the Acumatica framework. And more specifically, we're going to create a view using a customization project that is then exposed as a queryable object using their, what is it called again, generic inquiry. So the view that we want to create is going to be a relatively simple one. It is simply getting the supervisor ID out of the database. And the way it's doing that is it's grouping by the company ID and the supervisor ID of the EP employee table. Now the quickest way to find out which field you're looking for in the database is to let's see organization organization structure employees is to find the field in question for example I have this loaded with a bu with a bunch of test data to use the uh, control alt on the keyboard to create that question mark click on the field and we can see that it is the supervisor ID so with that knowledge and with access to the database we would create a view that we would then run as a test and we can see that this view successfully uh, creates itself in the database. So I'm just going to copy this. We're going to go into the customization area, customization projects. We're going to create a new customization project. We're going to call it utility views. And we're going to go ahead and save that. We're going to click into it. And we are going to allow pop-ups. And then you're going to click on the DB scripts. You're going to click the plus. You're going to paste in your code. You're going to give it the same name that you gave the view. Now, typically, if you're creating this view and you have a third party providing the Acumatica service, you'll want to append your company name to the views and use some special naming uh, patterns so that you don't accidentally clash with their tables. Because that is the one danger you might face is if you and that company are creating tables and structures with the same names. That would be a bad thing. But so far where I work, it has been completely fine to append our company name to views that we create and it's worked out pretty well for us. So once you've pasted that in and you got the code that creates the view in the SQL script, you just click OK. And this is going to do exactly what you think it will do is it will create the view within the database, passing that code from the Acumatica framework to the database on the back end. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and click the Publish Current Project button. And that's going to kick off the process of the Acumatica framework to process that code that you've submitted and validate it. So it is done. But we aren't done yet. We need to go to the code section. And we're going to hit the plus sign. We're going to click New DAC. We're going to paste in that same name that we named the view. That's how this area is going to find uh, the, uh, the attributes that we need. We're going to select Generate Members from Database, which is really useful, especially when you're dealing with a view where you have a lot of fields. We're going to click OK. And that's going to generate some, uh, I guess it's C Sharp but the uh, framework has uh, manipulated it in some ways. Like you require this region supervisor ID that pops in there. That's not a comment. It, it will not compile correctly if you get rid of this. Um, so as we can see, it has identified our super, supervisor ID field. It has given it a display name for us. It's automatically classified it as a integer and um, it has given it the appropriate names. And this will pretty much work. But we need to add one more thing that makes Acumatica happy that this does not do is we need to say that this is the key. So we will say is true. We will save that. We will publish that. Now if you don't if you forget this is key equals true, some some utility programs that Acumatica uses, such as Report Designer will not process this stuff correctly and will get confused and show you the same first roll over and over for every uh, record that you have. So if you have 10 records, you'll see the first record 10 times. It's some 
weird behavior. So this is key prevents that from happening. All right, so this is the first customization in this framework that I've published. So it's going through some extra steps that I don't believe would occur if I had published previous customizations here. So I will, okay, looks like it finished. Website is updated. Now let's go see if we can find this. So we'll go ahead and close this. We'll go to our generic inquiry. And we're just going to type in, uh, we're going to create a new one. We're going to call it test. It's going to be site map title test. And we're just going to put it uh, anywhere we want, I guess. Save that. We're going to look for that table. What do we call it? We call it supervisor, right? So we will see that it's been added to our objects that we can pull out. Company name underscore supervisors, that's it. I'm going to save that. Go ahead and go to the results grid. Only have one field in there, so I'm going to select the object. Select all fields, even though it's just one field. Save that, and let's view it. All right, and there you have it. We have the uh, supervisor ID exposed within a generic inquiry object. And the neat thing here is that we can add additional tables and then connect to this object that we created. For, for example, if we wanted to get the name of supervisors, we would then add the, uh, you know, the employee information table and then connect it to the supervisor table via the IDs. And then we could get uh, more information and display a nice report that just displays the company supervisors. Anyways, that completes this lesson for Pragmatic Agility. I hope you enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. And I uh, hope to see you again. Thanks. Bye.